told you I was gonna bark. Well. Bark River <laughs> Knives, guys. We are talking all about this American brand that is so awesome, Bark River Knives. I can't wait, I love them. It's happening today on Hi. Guys Talk Knives. <laughs> Welcome to Guys Talk Knives. Uh, Jason, Nathan, and Andy here. Swags. So good, just ran right. Everybody me. knows your swags. I'm about to knock your hat off. You, in a you know, you know, knocker. it happens. You'll probably knock mine off too, and that'd be No, worse. yeah, we bad. It'd be very bad. We're gonna talk Bark River Knives one. today. I knew it was gonna be one of those days. What? That's why I didn't wear a hat. I knew it was gonna be one of those days. People getting their I hats mean, slapped off their heads. Yeah, we're taping right now, two weeks out of Blade shows, so yeah, it could be a hat knocking kind of day. It might. <laughs> it really might. Well, fixed blades, all fixed blades today, which is very rare for our show. Knocker. Are you just I, gonna keep talking when I say this? I am. Yes. No. Sorry. Go ahead. It just stuck in me. My, Fix, in my brain. It stuck in me. It stuck in me brain. We got fixed blades today. We're going to have a very oh. good show. Oh, you're making my eye twitch. <laughs> and it is unusual, like you said, that we <coughs> that it's just fixed blades. Yeah, because we're such folding knife people. I mean, we really are. We're knife enthusiasts across the board, well, straight up. But I am so much more a folding knife person than a fixed blade person. I, I have never I... EDC'd a fixed blade. I know you do sometimes. I do actually pretty often. I mean, if I forget my belt, is kind of tucking into the waistband. I no, really that's like cool. it. No, that's cool. No, that's... He said, that's cool. Like, no, no. Oh, like, so, no, no. Nice. But the one, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're not doing one of these gigantic I knives. I would. Put that it past so, me. Put it past me. I won't put it past you because I know you'll do it. You know, I have 32 <laughs> knives later. That's right. We know that you can deep carry something. And I and I carried a, I carried my SC3 at Blade Show. Yeah. All three days. I, I, and I carried an SC3 at yeah, Blade you did. Show, too. Oh, my SC3. Orange. Yeah. Yes. I just, I've never carried one like that. Not, I mean, I wear a belt every day, too. You don't even sure. go camping. That's true. And I have carried one hiking and camping, but that was really more of a purpose-oriented thing than I'm going to just tote a knife around all day. I have to say, I've carried a knife like while camping, not camping, but while hiking, and it really was not good for me because every time I was walking, like something snagged me, and I was like, ah! Oh. See, I always take mine, and it's tucked in the side of a backpack upside down, where I can just reach back and pop it loose. I bring a Hello Kitty backpack, fam. Like, there's not, there's not a lot of pockets uh, there. Are you no. telling me that the Hello <laughs> Kitty's not Molly like, compatible? An eight and a half inch, you know, like, fixed blade coming out of a Hello Kitty backpack, that would be, like, the greatest thing on the planet. No, somebody like, needs uh, to make an eight-bit version oh. of a Hello Kitty backpack, backpack out, of, out of Molly, so that all, each Molly strap forms its face. Wow. That'd be, be amazing. Cool. That would be kind of cool. But you could sell that. Mine There's has, a market. Mine has rhinestones. <sighs> and back to Park River Knives. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Guys, in case you don't know, we are brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com, and that's where you can find all of these Bark River Knives. Yes. Also, if you're not familiar with Bark River Knives, uh, we really just picked up the almost the entire line, right? Yeah, the, we're actually we're still just adding, them adding a day. bunch yeah, of them. We've in got by over the day. 60 or 70 online now, um, and it's just a, it's a constant. Process of putting it, new. If you're not online. familiar with this brand, it is an American to. made brand of yeah. fixed blade knives that look, I mean, they're as close to custom as you can possibly get, right? There is something about the, the thickness of the steel they use, the care they put into each design, and the level of skill they have with a micarta. I mean, if, if that's what I think pulled me to them, because I'm a micarta junkie, mm -hmm. but that's what pulled me to them first. I mean, if you look at this, you can see all the layers of Micarta on this as they're as they're working down. He's just outside <laughs> the Micarta plane going. You got any more Micarta? Give me some Micarta. Is anybody noticing it. that like your voice is getting so like deep and oh. sultry the more you talk about I these? I love it. Mm -hmm. It's because he's the Micarta junkie. I have I have so. I have literally dug into videos on how to make it. We were talking about that beforehand. Uh -huh. So you know you have to make a handle. You have layer upon layer of of usually this is linen, or uh -huh. canvas, um, and you have epoxy on it. You form it into a block, you press it overnight in a mold, and then you have a block that's ready to cut. And what you end up with is just this gorgeous handle that's gonna pick up all the oils out of your hands and it's and it's gonna wear over time and and change, you know, texture and everything. And it just is I just think it's incredible. It, it's amazing that somebody decided that was a, right. a good a good material to make a knife handle out of. Sure. Let's jump into the first one yes, just so we can show for people sure. what we got. Before we need to buy a I know, case right? room. We're actually going to start with the Big Daddy. What is the yes, name indeed. of this one? So this is the Kalahari Camp 2. <sighs> that is a big honking knife. <laughs> I mean, if you can't get stuff oh, done with this. That's right. 
you got a problem. You could use it as a butter knife. That knife would oh, not care. Look, hey, let me tell you, this thing you will go right French through. Bread, that is this thing, thing will go right through the peanut butter sandwich just fine. I, I'm, hey, I'm saying on any it's camping pretty- trip, that knife's going to be everything. I might have used it as a tent stake at some point. Just into the ground to hold the tent up. <laughs> it's practically a chef's knife. If you really I, look no, at it. Sure. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. It's just got a bigger belly on the end here. It's just, it's just gorgeous. Let's so, throw it down here. And we'll get this in the shot. The, the Kalahari Camp 2, it's a 6.9 inch A2 tool steel blade. It's uh, almost a 20th of an inch thick. Flip it over so we can see the spine. There we go. Yeah. Look at that thing. It's just a, and you're going to see that with all the Bark Rivers. They're all just that beefy. I, I love the smoothness of the connection into the handle, right? Yeah. So they've done some really nice craftsmanship here that that is, a, you do not feel these edges whatsoever. And as now we talked I'm about, the knives exactly. Video. It's a canvas micarta handle. Uh, it comes with a leather belt loop uh, sheath, um, which is you know really good yeah, we'll high quality piece. Um, it is a little bit over twelve inches overall. Weighs eighteen and a quarter ounces. Made in the USA. There's uh, no nickel way silver that's pins right. and, and <laughs> lanyard tube. It's just there's no way that's right. What? That's not a pound of knife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it might be. It might be. Once you add we'll in check the sheet, on that because I'm not positive. I, I think it feels like a pound. I think it is. In your expert judgment, I, I, mean, I will agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Since you know you do all those right off the top of your head for the swags report. Because no, that's that thirteen. More like times. Do it. That's thirteen. Uh, but the handle on that has two brass guards. Yeah, this one is heavier than this one. That one has a brass butt cap. We'll check. Brass pumps. You're a butt cap. <laughs> We'll, we'll, I knew we'll it was coming. One. I knew as soon as it came out of my mouth, I was going to get called a butt cap. <laughs> what was the price point on this before we steal so, the thunder with the next knife? 218 218 on this for um, American Man. And, you know, you hear that, that price and you're like, oh, you know, that's 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 two bills. Man, you get this knife, you get a whooping stick, too. Well, show them the sheath. Stick. That's the sheath. Yeah. You want to see how good it is? Wow. Hey, check out the construction <laughs> of this, though. It's not just a fold-over loop that is stitched. No. That's it. This is one whole piece here, one piece here, and two in the front. Yeah. I mean, and then you've, you've got, got a, the, the uh, two rivets. Yeah. Uh, they go all the way through, so you can lash this down to whatever you need exactly. to. Exactly. So, like, you know, your back and go Rambo style, right in the you've woods. You got to. That's right. I, I, I drew it. first blood. Maybe that one I could actually pull off my back and not have an issue like the katanas. <laughs> I want to try that because the stripe. Oh, uh, she was permanently marked <laughs> by the bark yes. of her knife. Hey. Part of the family at that point. That's right. That's how you know your knife loves you. The knife is family. It's like you have joined face. at the blood mark. Yeah. There you go. But no, I, I completely love the shape, the style, the feel, everything about that knife. Yeah, that's And if just, you want a good, trusty, large, outdoor adventure knife, that is it. That is it. For real. Hunting, hiking, camping. Yeah. Going chopping. That's right. Or chopping. You take this down to coals and just knock yourself that's right. out. That's right. I, I love it. Oh. You could. You the could. next one we're going to look at is probably my favorite on the table. And it's, it's just the probably because, yeah, it is, it is the, the craftsmanship. I'm going to show you in the sheath first. This is a really nice sheath that's actually going to close up here. Yeah. Fits in deep. And you're actually protecting some of the uh, decorative parts of the handle on this. What is the name of this one? This one's one? my favorite. So this is the Marauder. This is the Marauder. Let me put that in my pocket. Look, at the, my look pocket. at the grinds. Sure. Oh, yeah. Stop myself. I know that you was good. Have. That was good. You just ate it right up. There's a lot of work in this knife. So with the Marauder, you're looking at a, a six and a half inch blade, uh, CPM 154. Yeah, CPM steel. 154. This yeah. is like the high that's end a, of that. That's stuff. a lot of of steel in that knife too. Um, it's again almost a twentieth of an inch thick, brass guard and pommel, black linen micarta handle with black and black red and white spacers. Mm-hmm. They've actually have done that micarta to kind of have a wood grain look to it, uh, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, leather belt sheath, 11, almost 11 and a half inches long overall, mm-hmm. made in the USA. Um, and, and again, you're you're talking about just, a, I mean, it's a presentation piece almost as much as anything else. Yeah, the but, big belly in the blade, almost a recurve there. I love the swedge on the top. I mean, it's It just, almost has a, has a Bowie knife feel to it. It does. Yeah. Very much. It has that classic Bowie knife feel. I'm going to hand it to you. Yeah, I, I, I dig it. <laughs> Did we do the Dave Canterbury method? <laughs> Didn't it, wasn't that who talked to you about handing knives to each other? No. Uh, it no, was, it was, uh, it was, it was Shane. Shane. Yeah, it was Shane and Essie. Mm, 
there was a lot of stuff that happened to Blade Show, guys. Handle toward the person, blade up. Yep. Yeah, no, it was Shane that was yep. talking about that. How pretty that is. You got, like, stuff in there. What'd you do? I didn't get stuff in there. That's actually residue from the sheath. <clears throat> yes. I'm trying to blame him. Don't blame Andy. Little sheath residue. I really And like again, you've got a high quality sheath. It's not, you know, it's not like two pieces of leather that have just been, been stuck Those together. Those spacers to me just set that thing off. I don't know why that's so cool. It is the idea that. Yeah. Um, I really let me look like at it real quick. Open your hand. Okay, so here's the awesome thing. I'm going to come back down here, John. We'll see if we can get it. So, this was shaped as a one piece handle. Yeah. This portion and this portion. <laughs> then they split it. They mitered it and put in the, the spacers. spacers. Because you can see the pattern stays the same across. And then That's went cool. back and buffed and it again buffed and buffed everything it. down to make that top and that, that slanted piece, the slanted spacers, hmm. all fit in there perfectly without any yeah. type of catch or anything. That's ridiculous. No, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. And, that, and it's you know a what? hefty knife. Here's what I like about the fact that you picked that one and the rest of these. Um, you do a good job of picking the products anyway. Thank you. You, you and Melina both, but I do. This shows really the range. These first two of Bark River. Yes. <laughs> so gorgeous, gorgeous presentation knife with lots of attitude, lots of accents to it, mm -hmm. and then just a working knife. Yeah. Just a big, huge working and knife. And what's crazy is, you can take this in the field. It is going oh, to yeah, work every time. Yes. It doesn't have to sit on a shelf. No. This thing is the real deal. Uh, no. If I owned that, it would be going. Oh, yeah. Yes. You'd it's be like be sleeping with it now, in a sleeping bag. I will admit, I might have something else that I'm going to use if I've got to, like, you know, <laughs> treat it poorly. I'm right? probably not going to baton with that, though you could. Yeah. Um, but that's a that's just a gorgeous knife, and it's two ninety three. Two ninety three. So three hundred bucks basically for that knife that is for that quality. Ten Unreal. Of yeah. CPM. USA made. Yeah. yeah. CPM one fifty four. Yeah. Come on. For real. Yeah. It's great. For real. Go with the next one. You can put it out. I really dig this one. I like the shape. This may be my favorite shaped blade on the Let's table. Wipe. And you can hold. Oh, really? So, yep. This I'll is the you. Kalahari Bushman 2. Kalahari. A um, little bit smaller knife than the last two we saw. Again, that really thick blade that we're used to from Bark River. Um, great Makarta handles on it. Uh, what you're looking at in the Bushman 2 is a four and a quarter inch CPM 3V drop point blade. 3V in this blade? For yeah. real? Wow. It's a satin finish. It's an eighth of an inch thick on the on the blade all the way through. Um, again, just a big, a big beefy chunk of steel. A Micarta handle, lanyard hole, leather sheath, 9.125 inches overall, made in the USA. And the blade on this. Look at that grind. Flip it again. Yeah. I love this grind. Hold it still. It's going to go where it go and tapers up to this edge, and yep. that grind starts there and goes all the way to the edge. Look at my crazy finger. I know, right? It was like immediate. I, these these things pick up fingerprints. They do. I like, just think like, that's gorgeous, and that taper of that grind is almost a Scandi grind. It is. And it means that you're going to be able to get in yeah. and then lift material like a wedge. Sure. Right. I mean, th okay, this again, so as a as just a good all around outdoor camp knife, hiking sure. knife, whatever. Sure. Um, and it's going to last forever too. I mean, you're looking at at three car handles, three V steel. I mean, it, you're going to be able to put an edge on it, <laughs> right? With some work, but you can put an edge on it, and that edge is that edge retention is going to last. You're talking through about almost anything you do. A steel that you're seeing in Spiderco right now. Sure. A lot of yes, and it's the higher end spider codes yep. in those three V steels, and you're paying not a whole lot more for it for that chunk there yeah. of blade. I mean, again, that's just Seriously. a. a I, that's I a love, pretty knife. I love the way every piece of this knife feels in your hand. Mm -hmm. um, you you can choke up on it if you need to. It's just it's it's fantastic, and right. this one's two eighteen. Right, nice. Um, I like the feel of this one. Look at the shape from tip to butt on yeah. this knife. I mean, it just, this handle shape to the point, aerodynamic, it's, it's nice, it's pretty. This little sheath is pretty cool too because once you get this thing broken in, this thing isn't going anywhere. And that's one thing you're gonna look at with almost every Bark River that we've handled is uh, their, their sheath. Squeeze. Well, apparently not. There you go. There you go, you squeezed. Their sheaths are, are they're non-welted. 
So you're going to have the joy of doing that yourself. What That's does that gonna, mean? So when you, when okay. you welt a sheath, you actually... We can kind of look at it right here. Yeah. So when you welt a sheath... Jason, go ahead. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you're going to wet the leather, mm -hmm. put the item in there, and let the leather form as it dries around hmm. the item. And you've had some that you've worn on your belt hip that are like that, on your, on your belt that's like that. Belt yeah. hip, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's so the hip of a belt? It would hold this form yeah. right here without the knife in it. Gotcha. The difference with what Bark River's doing is they're letting, they're doing a non-wet welting, basically. So yeah. over time, as you wear this, as you use it, it's going to form to the shape of the knife in there. So when you first get this out of the box, you're going to have to to play with it to get it to sit in the sheath exactly the way you want it. It's the cup I was missing at the really? bottom. I was hitting the edge of the cup. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. You squeeze. But as you show... It's not going anywhere. They're really going to come in really, really well. Yeah, and this one even has a ferro rod loop on the side. All of them, almost all of them do. Uh, um, no, this no? one and that one. Okay. Just, but there's a, a lot of the other designs do. Right. Um, and again, you're looking at a sheath that is... That has some really, really good high quality stitching on it. Nice. I just I I that may be my favorite, maybe maybe the one I had, but I like that one too. Guys, we're dead pan right in the middle yeah. of an episode of Guys Talk Knives brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, SMKW.com, the world's largest knife store, both online and here in Smoky in the Smokies. Sure. At Smoky Mountain Knifeworks in our retail showroom. That location is right off of Interstate 40, exit 407. Go jaunt up a couple like of miles. Look for the giant. For the giant. Entire life. What? Interstate 40? Please <laughs> like ask me like I know where in, I'm at anyway. In case, in case we change the name of the interstate. That's right. <laughs> Just come up and look for the big blue roof. You cannot miss it. You're going to go across the bridge, look to the right, you'll see a yeah. massive blue roof. And let's clarify. My ride today, I thought it was a small blue roof that's like prior. No, no, no. no. no, no. It's the big it's blue the roof. It's the big one. It, it, yeah, 108,000 square feet yeah, in our retail showroom. We also put out a catalog every month. If you want that, go to smkw.com, go up to the top of the page, click the request a catalog. We will send you one almost every single month. We put out an email newsletter four times a week. Yeah. And there's really no telling what you're going to see in that email newsletter. We do daily flash sales at 9 a.m. Every yes, day. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We and give away two things, on one on Facebook, one on Instagram every week. Yes. I'm not going to mention the exact number. Mm-hmm. But we sold a lot mm -hmm. of Benchmades on flash sales oh, yeah. about a week ago. Oh, yeah. A um, lot. It was scary. Right. Like to the point that we got calls from the warehouse, and they went, Is did something go wrong? <laughs> And we went, no. And they were like, okay, fine, we're shipping them. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, man. Yeah. Pay okay, attention fine. to those flash sales. Just yes. set yourself a reminder every day at 9 a.m. Go just look. Roll over I'm going to tell you out. just straight away, some things sell out fast. <laughs> yeah, they do. So get on at 9. Yeah, get do. on at 9. Sometimes the stuff we put on there, because Sean's out of his mind, uh -huh. there's one item, and he cut the price in half. Right. And it's an antique knife that's... Hugely valuable that he went, oh, you know what? Right. Nah, and here's the price now. There's, and people go, for real? There's been times when we're down to 7 to 15 items, and they're gone in the first five minutes. Yeah, yeah. It just is what it is. You have Long. to be ready, have to look, 9 a.m. on the website, and just check it out. If you're on Facebook, we'll we put them up there those. every day at 9. And yes. sometimes we don't. That's right. <laughs> it's just really, you know... It's one of yeah. those things. It's luck it's of the fun. draw. Come to the site every day and check it out. You might get a great deal on something. Well, they're always great deals. You've just no, got to no. figure out. They might, they might actually resonate you. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So let's jump back into these. Yes. Um, what's next? What's the next name? This one's pretty. Look at the die job on that Micarta. What is the name on that? I'm loving the Micarta, sir. You leave me alone. This is oh, it's got crud the it. Games Keeper. Okay. The Games Keeper. This is actually the Games Keeper in black. Uh, it's a black. Mac that may be the deepest Macarta die job on a handle I've ever seen. <laughs> That's my next band name, Deepest Macarta Die Job. <laughs> it would be a good band name. Right? Look at it though. I mean, it's true almost all the way through. And again, from my very limited study on Macarta, they either <clears throat> can dye the linen they <coughs> used or they can dye. The resin they use to make that color, or maybe right. they both. Nice. And that's why you get that true color all the way through. Uh, so with this, you're looking at A2 tool steel mm -hmm. uh, with a drop point blade, satin finish. Again, black canvas micarta handle that I'm kind of in love with, maybe a little too much. Uh, a little nickel, too much. I don't know if it can be too much. That's true. Nickel pins and guard, uh, lanyard hole, leather sheet. Nickel, silver pins and guards. Yeah. 
Did I not say nickel silver? You said nickel. Oh, well, that's what's on here. I know. We gotta get that fixed. We, we've been trying. Dang it. <laughs> nickel silver. <laughs> Pins and guard. Um, Sometimes you guys just have to go along for Jason yes. and I's inside jokes. <laughs> uh, nine inch overall. Nine inches overall. Uh-huh. Uh, made in the USA. And again, that's uh, just a. It's just a good looking knife. Yeah. And it, again, that Macarta is just. Fit and finish is gorgeous. superb. Superb. I'm just gonna sit there and stroke the spine. <laughs> I'm telling you. Their attention to detail. You don't have I a mean, case seriously. where you pick up one of their knives, and. You're like, eh, it doesn't quite feel good in my hand. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't lay smooth along the spine. The, right. Where my hand is, there's a little bit, it rubs a little bit when I'm using it. Right. Like, I think we can start having like a block of wood in here for shows. Um, you know, we got the workbench. At some point, we're going to break it out. I said we'd make some Micarta. <laughs> no, no, no. Go no, 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 no. <laughs> Listen make to some me. Micarta. I think we do. Who's got the Micarta? To show how difficult yeah, that the process is. I mean, we can try it. I mean, it's going to be a period of time, but I th- think she's saying we need a block of wood and a workbench to show them some of this no, work I, stuff. No, definitely. Yeah, it's just whenever we're like, oh my God, I just, like you just did it. You were just like pretending. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you don't have to pretend, pretend no more. Because that's, that's just <laughs> a... It can be real life. Show them the that's spine of that knife. Point the blade down to show them this way. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. Look at the taper that is happening yeah. in this blade. So again, you've got great piercing power. Because they've ground this to just have an excellent taper towards the point. And see, it's not, they all, because there's such attention to detail, they're not all the same way. Right. So this one stays thick much further down than this one does. I just, I, I dig their work. Yep. They're really, really nice. Yeah. Had <laughs> saber teeth, guys. What was the price point on this? Uh, the Gameskeeper is 195 I feel so like right this, at 200 bucks. Yeah, no, I feel like this is a great everyday carry for the woods. I, I not, it may be one of the best deals out of their entire set. Um, again, you're getting you're getting A2 still. Uh, this sheath, a little bit different than what we've seen as well. This is a fold over stitch. So they fold it over and they've done a double run of stitching up and down the side. He's all about the cloth. He is. You're like Glass Breaker Central, and Jason is all about the epoxies and the cloth. I'm, and I'm the... telling you, that's that is my knife project for this summer. I'm gonna rehandle a Rough Rider. And I've been hearing this for a year. You have uh, not? That knife did come out a year ago. I've been hearing this for a year. I'm going to stab Six you in the Bark months. River. I'm going to stab you in the Bark River. I don't think you will because you got to sit here and like look and be like, which one? Which one? I don't know what to kill you well, with. Well, the bad thing is then it's going to make Just kill me with the pretty sticky one. Sticky and... Call me sticky. Blood's not sticky. Blood, depending on how dry it is, it's sticky. And it's pretty dry. Well, right. just going to wipe it off afterwards. <laughs> Mine just powders out. <laughs> That's what they do when they stick me in the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> We'll just uh, reanimate this. and Next up are two of the smaller ones we have on the table. So this is the Bush Sax Bantam Green. I love good sax. I knew you were going there. S-E-A-X, if anybody's concerned. Yes. A very medieval term for a, a style of blade and a it sword. It is a worn cliff. It's just, a worn cliff. Let's just face it. It's, it's exactly what it is. That's what it is. Um... This is a four inch A2 tool steel Warncliffe blade, an eighth of an inch thick, green canvas micarta handles, nickel silver pins and lanyard tube, leather belt sheath, 8.75 inches overall. Um, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I knew you were doing something. That's a, that is a traditional Walking knife. Iron. Pretty green micarta on this too, very yeah. olive drab. Love it. It looks this like to me rivals that. I don't so know about that. As far as attractiveness? Yes. I I would agree. Yeah. I don't. Nope, not even. So that, that you're one, all about that? I am all about that one. Here's that what one does it for on me my... on this one. You fist bumped me. I did. Not even <laughs> intentionally. Here's what does it for me on that one. Is there is so much history beside, behind the style of the blade, behind the Warncliffe, behind the name and everything that it just. It, I don't I care about say, the history. I, I it do is like just like Warncliffe blades. Those, yeah. This is me. Nice Warncliffe. It, it tweaks. Cutting power. Yeah, it tweaks every part of my brain. It does. With that knife. It does. I mean, it hits you at an emotional level, and it that does. does help you make a decision to buy it. It does. <laughs> I'm just. I'm all about these handles. <laughs> Long time watchers are gonna be like, they just go on this stuff every time. All the time. 
<laughs> as I choke to death because I And again, you, you can see the layers. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, literally. Yeah. You can literally see. I wish we could get like close enough for them to we'll see. Put like, it over here. Well, I don't yeah. know. People can look on the screen and see it. I'm you can see in the handle. What, what Swags and I were talking about is you can see in the handle the levers. The levers. <laughs> the levers. The layers of canvas Yeah. as you go down. And where they where they have actually sanded that back is but where those different layers start. Think of there. a topo map. I mean, because that's exactly. really what you're looking that's at. That's what you're looking at. Yep, so each of those. What is that? I don't know, it was a small goat, I think. John? I think it was Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> I I just think this is a... A2, Micarta, yeah. price point. Um, 180? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That's surprising. USA made. And that knife to me... And again, as Andy was pointing out with the last one, you can see that, that taper mm -hmm. on that blade. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going from a tremendously big piece of steel down to the tip. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's, yeah. It's purdy. It's the male steel. Fair right not. on the sheath. And, you know, very, there's something about there, there's, there's some simplicity to what they do. You're just a simple man. I am! <laughs> I, I, simple I, I, agree with, I agree with that. So that's, to me, look, okay. The knife is a simple tool. It's a wedge with a handle. Yes, you and the, here's the thing. Great. I know. It's I, mean, I was I torn between the that. simplicity of this one and how pretty at a simple and strong knife this is versus the gorgeous work sure. in that. I know, just I'm not a maker. I don't make knives, but I know what work went into making that as pretty as it is. Sure. I know what amount of work made this feel the way it does, and also Horncliffe and <laughs> a production knife. Yes. So it's what we discussed at, at Blade Show with all those cats we got to talk to that were, yes. were their designers. They weren't real cats. They weren't real cats, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they not were, not meow. No. Um, with, with those designers was that leap from custom to production. Yep. And they've done the same thing with these. You know, you know, there was a time when this was, instead of being a first production run, which this one is, um, that it was a custom yep. Yep. that somebody made and said, okay, what can we tweak? to make this a production knife. And they've done the same thing with all these. Yep. I just, I, yeah. Last I'm but not impressed. least. Yeah, you really gotta love yeah. them. Do you think we were gonna make it through a whole show without me putting a trailing point on? <laughs> I was hoping we weren't. <laughs> ah, the trailing point. Look at that. So apparently in my brain, where is that one? In, in my brain, if it curves over, it cuts doesn't better. matter which way it goes. <laughs> I just, it stands out that I like it. Like, so the one clip I dig, a trailing point, I like it. Isn't that weird? It's just strange. Melina is laughing so hard off camera, I hope that is picked up by oh, some mics over here. Well, she just, has the greatest laugh of all She of does once she gets it going. That's why I married her. No, but that, that, tra <laughs> the trailing, that is a tremendously cool looking knife. <laughs> Let's take away the fact that it's a tool. Let's take away the fact that it's useful and functional. It's pretty. It's groovy looking. It is. I mean, just really neat. It's, it's just reminds you like turkey. Hi, I'm Jared the lumberjack. Would you like to borrow my knife? <laughs> I mean, that's where it's at, right? See to me, no, no, no. This no, no, is no, the you lumberjack. Can do, you can do your. This is. This is Michael the Skinner. <laughs> no, it's Sven the Skinner. It's Sven. Sven Skinner. It's Sven Skinner. And and he was he actually was leading the Lewis and Clark expedition. He was always like, why are you always gonna kill things? I hate you people. Let me skin this. And then he would and then he would go jump on a beaver and skin it. Jump on a beaver. <laughs> Just they were apparently bigger, or Sven was very small. He was crafty. He was crafty. No, he just said crazy. ride the beaver. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> All right. In my mind, he was like Stop. riding a beaver. No, I, get your dirty minds out of here. My father's the one's doing it. I'm, I'm talking like muskrat. I'm, muskrat. Okay. <laughs> riding a muskrat. He was like saddling it up and like riding it around the forest. So it was like Babe and the Big Blue Ox. He's this not was a giant skin beaver. Babe the Big Blue Muskrat. <laughs> Babe the Big Blue Muskrat. It's a totally different, that's a totally different story at that point. Sven is a Canadian treasure. Oh my God! Who rode a big blue muskrat? You know muskrat. He was Paul Bunyan's friend. Yeah, you know, muskrats move. Can you just see a giant one like going through the trees? Oh my boop, goodness! Y'all are crazy. Oh, let's, let's probably so talk this about is, this. <laughs> this is the Bark River classic trailing point with a green micarta handle.
Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 4.5 inch CPM 154 trailing point blade. Again, green canvas micarta handles that are fantastic. Uh, nickel silver pins and guard, lanyard hole, belt sheath, uh, and just nine inches overall. It's a and, and you can look, this one does not have the same girth as the others no. have, as far as the, the blade. Uh, a little bit smaller. Funny word. I like girth. girth. Girth is a good word. It is a little thinner. It is. Because it's a little a bit lighter. It's a thinner, sk a thin thinner skinner. skinner. Thinner skin For Sven the Skinner. Sven the Skinner. Who His is name's Leonard. The Beaver Rider. <laughs> Muskrat. Muskrat! Muskrat. <laughs> I like this one. I love, love these deep carry sheaths this way. It's almost a Scandinavian style yeah. sheath. Um, and again, over time, that's going when you pop that out, it's going to hold the exact right. shape. Right. Very tight fit on the belt loops too. On almost, you oh, know, yeah. all these that are that Remember are the one we put on for Swag's report. I really like that though because I prefer to like it to bang yeah, around. I don't yeah. want it to move. I've had some sheets where it's like they're, you know, between your belt loops, it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Oh. And oh. <laughs> so with this one, yes, <laughs> it's going to it's going to dangle. Right. It's going to hang yes. a little bit differently. But with the rest of these, even this big monster mm -hmm. is not going to move around that much. No. You apologize to her. I'm so sorry. What's that one's name? Beth. Beth? <laughs> What's funny is I was thinking Bethany. <laughs> that is <laughs> really funny. Wow. You have entered the mind of swag. Uh, it's a scary place. Please be careful. Or she's entered my Stay mind, which is tragic me. and sad. Stay away I got a mansion mind. up in here. You just pick a room. Caroline. Some are nice and pink, and the other ones Caroline. are black. This room is clear now. <laughs> she doesn't even know what we're talking no, about. She has no, no I idea. don't. I just know you guys poltergeist, are Poltergeist. The original Poltergeist. They put people in Where a pool. Where is my list of movies? We're going to have to do it. it up. We're going to do it. It's going to happen. The pool of the end. Real dead bodies. Did you say the price point on this trailing point? I did not. Um, 225 225 on the trailing point. Yeah. And that finishes up the six knives that we brought from Bark Rivers. But there's more. And what's cool here, too, is that... In these different styles, there are different handle there are. versions. Yes. So you can have tan, you can have green, you can have black. And here's the thing: when it's you like go King online, yep. one of the nice, one of the things about Barker <coughs> that I like is all of their green Micarta looks mm -hmm. the same. Yes. All of their black Micarta looks the same. All yes. their tan Micarta looks the same. It's nice That's and not, standard. yeah, it's not always true. Sometimes you look at it and okay, Essie's the one I always think of mm -hmm. because they don't do this deep of a black, mm -hmm. so you see the black and you think, well, that's not black. It's gray. It's gray. No, it's black. Yeah. That's an SE black Micarta handle. Mm -hmm. SE is not tan, not green. Yeah. So it's black. It's black. Um, with <laughs> Not to dig on SE. Not at all. No, great knives. Just, oh, amazing knives. It's the we same thing as with yes. Artisan, what they call red. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Um, no? Hold on. <laughs> When we were giving out, you know, those times at Blade Show, all the boxes that said r the red colors. Those were so purple. They were purple. Yeah. I like went, I was sure. like, oh, cool. And I like found someone. I was like, here, here's your knife. He opens it. He goes, yeah, I'll give this to my wife. I was like, <laughs> I'm very sorry. And, and all companies have their own yes. color schemes. Yes. With Bark River, at least you know they're going to be black, consistent. That's if, if you tan. buy this as green, your other knife that comes as green is going to be. Is going to match it. Yeah. They, they do a yes. great job. Again, that dyeing process they have down to an art form. Yep. Love. Guys, we are brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. You can find all of these Bark River knives and, and more. more at smkw.com. Just go to the brand that's listing. Dink. Yep. Click it. Look for Bark River knives and beast. find them. And of course, you can always look at the notes that are on these videos and click any of the links that take you right there. If you're listening on the podcast, if you go find us on Libsyn, mm -hmm. you can do the same thing yep, there. They're all there too. Um, Guys, we appreciate you. The SMKW Army just keeps growing. As, as we tape this, over 102,000 of you have joined the SMKW Army on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Can you buckle that? I knew she was going to make this you is, do it. This is what, again, this is what we're talking about yeah. with the leather sheets. Um, this is going to, it's going to stretch and clip a lot easier than it does right now. Over time. Well, that's how you want to. If it was yeah. already yeah, loose, then it'd be like super loose later on. Yep. All right. <laughs> and on that note, guys, we're going to wrap it. That's Jason. Melina's back there. This is Swags right there. John's in the studio. I'm Swags. Andy. And you have just watched Swags. The Bark River Knives episode of Guys, guys Talk Knives. Knives. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Look how nice it looks. Look at that. That's nice. Yeah.